Welcome to another CCRN Review Practice Questions video. This is for Neurology, question 1 through 10. Which of the following about pupillary response is true? Pupil change that is the first sign of an increased intracranial pressure. Sympathetic stimulation produces the dilation of the pupil. The optic nerve is responsible for the pupil size or bilateral dilatation of the pupil is an early sign of increased intracranial pressure? And the answer is B. Sympathetic stimulation produces the dilation of a pupil. This is due to an increase in intracranial pressure on the side of the injury that causes the compression of the ocular motor nerve. This injury decreases the parasympathetic stimulation, which allows the sympathetic stimulation to dominate, resulting in the pupil dilation. Under most circumstances, the pupil changes occur after the change in level of consciousness, except for one, in the uncal herniation, which you'll learn about in the review, and the optic nerve is responsible for the vision, not the pupil dilation. Number two, consciousness is dependent upon an intact reticular activating system and cerebral cortex, occipital lobe and midbrain, a medulla and meningeal artery, or the cerebellum and the pons? And the answer is A, the reticular activating system and the cerebral cortex. This is because the lower end of the reticular activating system is in the brain stem and responsible for the sleep-wake cycles. If this area is damaged, coma will occur. The cerebral cortex is also responsible for consciousness. Choices B, C, and D are actually responsible for other functions other than consciousness. Question number three. A patient presented with a left cerebral hemispheric ischemic strip. This patient would most likely have which of the following? A left Babinski reflex, an eye dilation to the right, left homonymous homoniopsia, or a right pronator drive? The answer is D, right pronator drive. The reflex motor and vision changes are contralateral to the injury or pathology eyes deviate toward the site of injury. A pronator drift is subtle, yet an early sign of motor weakness. Number four. Which of the following interventions would the nurse consider to be inappropriate for the patient with an increased intracranial pressure? Maintaining the PaCO2 level at 35 millimeters of mercury, feeding the patient via a feeding tube, log rolling while turning the patient or administering 5% dextrose in water at 83 milliliters an hour? The answer is D, administering the 5% dextrose in water at 83 milliliters an hour. This is because this is a hypotonic solution that will leave the vascular space by osmosis and will most likely displace the intracellular space, resulting in brain cell swelling. This will increase the ICP. All the other choices for the patient with an increased ICP will not make the ICP worsen. A patient has a history of a fall while skiing, hitting the right side of his head. He presented with a nose fracture, developed a sudden episode of emesis, and a dilated right pupil. This was followed by a decrease in the level of consciousness. Which of the following should the nurse anticipate? The answer is C emergent treatment for an uncal herniation. This patient has signs of an epidermal hematoma, which is most likely to the right temporal area. And as mentioned in the rationale on question one, this is the only neurological problem that will cause a change in pupil dilation before a level of change in consciousness. Question number six. Examination of the cerebrospinal fluid and bacterial meningitis will reveal all of the following except cloudiness, decreased glucose, decreased protein, or an increase in pressure? And the answer is C, decreased protein. This is because protein is actually increased during bacterial meningitis, not decreased. Cloudiness, decreased glucose, and increased pressure are all typical of bacterial meningitis. Five days after a subarachnoid hemorrhage, the patient experienced a decrease in level of consciousness. The CT scan is negative for a rebleed. The patient will most likely benefit from 
You return back to the operating room. Aggressive fluid administration. Amicar administration. An osmotic diuretic such as mannitol. And the answer is B, aggressive fluid administration. Two of the major complications of a subarachnoid hemorrhage is rebleed and a vasospasm. In this patient's case, the rebleed was ruled out. The patient most likely has a vasospasm, and aggressive fluid administration is indicated. Choice A does not help with the vasospasm, and choice C may be indicated for a rebleed. A diuretic will only decrease the vascular volume and will worsen a vasospasm. A 71-year-old female presents to the hospital with a possible stroke. She does respond to verbal stimuli. Her blood pressure is 180 over 110. Her pupils do react and are equal. Her level of consciousness suddenly decreases. Upon examination of her eyes, you note the left pupil is large and non-reactive to light. Now, her BP is 192 over 114. Her glucose level is normal at 90. Based on the information, what has likely occurred? Second cranial nerve compression. The patient is having a hypoglycemic reaction. Increasing MAP, which has decreased cerebral perfusion pressure. Or an increase in the intracranial pressure has compressed the third cranial nerve, which is the ocular motor nerve. And the answer is D. Increased intracranial pressure has compressed the third cranial nerve. Left pupil dilation is a sign of cranial nerve number three, the ocular motor, and is on the side of the injury. Choice A is the optic nerve compression and that only affects vision. Choice B, the hypoglycemic reaction would not result in pupil dilation. And choice C would actually increase cerebral perfusion pressure. A 32 year old is admitted with raccoon eyes you notice clear fluid draining from his nose. The most appropriate intervention would be to tape sterile gauze underneath his nose, insert a nasal gastric tube to prevent vomiting, suction the nasopharynx as needed, or insert nasal packing until the physician arrives. And the answer is A. Tape sterile gauze underneath the nose. This is most likely from a basal or skull fracture that causes a meningeal tear with potential for CSF drainage from the nose or ear. The CSF should be allowed to drain. Choices B and D may be harmful. Ended with a scalp laceration and a 6 mm depressed skull fracture with no neurological changes. Which of the following is true regarding the care of this patient? The patient should be held for observation for 24 hours before being discharged. The patient may be discharged with instructions to return in 48 hours. The patient needs a prescription for antibiotic therapy. Or the patient needs emergency surgery. And the answer is D. The patient needs immediate and emergent surgery. With a skull depression of 6 millimeters, the patient will require surgery to elevate the skull from the brain tissue. The other three choices will not prevent the potential complications that might occur. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel for more educational content and to learn more about nursing and healthcare in general. Also, please visit lifelongnursing.com and thanks for watching.